Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Explore China Tanso Jongo. And in this video, I want to shortly introduce this book here, The Last Kings of Shanghai, which was introduced to me by one of you guys uh, watching these videos in a comment. And he or she said, I'm reading this book, it's really interesting. And I thought, well, the t t title sounds good. So I also grabbed it. And this book, written by Jonathan Kaufmann, is telling us the story, or the history, better, um, of the two very influential Jewish families, the Kaduris and the Sassoons, and especially about Victor Sassoon, who was like the, the head of the Sassoon family. Um, they have their origins, I think, in uh, Baghdad, but also in Britain, and they were expanding to their business to Asia, various parts in Asia, including Bombay in India and Shanghai in China. And the very interesting thing about this book is that the author is telling or linking the history of these families with the history of a big city such as Shanghai, which is uh, something new to me and I haven't read about this uh, in this form any other book so far. And I will just shortly tell you the key takeaways out of this book. So first of all, it's interesting to see that these big uh, family businesses existed and uh, first and foremost they made their money due to not so nice business. Uh, the Sassoons made a greater fortune due to the sale and trade with opium into China so they were building it and they were growing it in India and then exporting it to China where they sold it. So that's why until the 1870s, the end of the 1870s, the Sassoons um, they owned 70% share of all the opium trade within China and they were also making their money due to low wages in China and this inequality and they were gaining through it, through this a lot. Um, but at the same time, it also has to be mentioned that due to the help of Victor Sassoon and their talks and negotiations with Japanese generals, it was possible to uh, help to, come on, um, to bring in 18,000 Jewish refugees who at that time were fleeing Nazi Germany and the Nazi Germans also from Austria and other parts in Europe and then they settled in Shanghai. Why exactly 18,000 is because in 1938-39 the Japanese already were partners of Germany and the Germans were asking and pressuring the Japanese to hand them out or telling them exactly who, who's, uh, who uh, Jewish Germans stay are they in Shanghai and they should be put on a ship and were, uh, should be sank uh, in the Huangpu River. But uh, due to the one general, Inu Tsangku, I think was his name, they uh, just managed to put a top on this number of Jewish who could come there, but they could at least live in Shanghai in the Hongqiao area, which was also called Little Vienna. Then the second interesting thing out of this book is um, which I didn't know before. I mean, we all know the fall of the Qing dynasty in 1911, but uh, with the Wu Chang uprising. But what I didn't know is that one small brick of the reasons for this was actually that there were government officials, Chinese government officials, who used a lot of uh, state funds to, yeah, privately or um, not openly invest into rubber, into the rubber market, rubber stock markets, because. In the 1910s, 1920s, when uh, Henry Ford produced like um, production lines and more and more cars could be produced in higher numbers, more uh, rubber was needed. And these rubber plantations were uh, planted and uh, in mainly Malaysia. And actually, I like it when I can find something or read something in a book and can connect it to another book. So I've just recently read this book here by Amitav Ghosh, The Glass Palace, which is about uh, the, the, yeah, the family of uh, the, the, king, of the uh, king and queen of the Burmese uh, in, in Burma who had to flee and live in exile in India, etc. But, but there was one family who was first investing in teak business in uh, Myanmar, but then later shifted to investing into rubber plantations in Malaysia in that time as well. Um, and now again in this book, so the government, the Chinese government uh, officials, they invested into rubber, um, into the stock market, but of course the stock market prices were rising much faster than the actual worth of this industry, of this rubber industry. So this rubber industry at some time was not rising up again, but the stock prices then yeah, plunged and this huge bubble burst and they lost a lot of money. So what then? 
the Chinese government uh, officials said is, is we want to sell our railway to foreigners and this was the the Chinese uh, people they didn't react to it very positively they were outraged and protested and this also led to the Wuchang uprising and I think this is an interesting fact as well. Then another interesting thing out of this book is, is the Kaduri family that they were such good friends of China as also Xi Jinping said that the Kaduri family um, are always friends to China and this is not less, not little due to the fact that Lawrence Kaduri who um, did like huge investments in China um, for instance I think he was building one the, the first nuclear power plant in on Hong Kong territory um, with an investment greater than one billion or one million um, and they were all, he was also sometimes meeting with Deng Xiaoping at that time but also it was due to the fact that he was not speaking up against any things China did like for instance in 1989 with the Tiananmen uprising and then um, the slaughtering of all these protesting students uh, Lawrence Kaduri just didn't mention anything about this and actually the opposite he said sometimes you need a strong lead for people to develop and uh, later this is why also his son Michael still gets got benefits from this uh, from this behavior of his father and if you're interested in yeah the history and uh, history of buildings in Shanghai and if you're in Shanghai traveling Shanghai rocking around the band I can highly recommend this book because he's telling me a lot of things about the Peace Hotel which was back then I think the Cafe Hotel which also Victor Sassoon built or that Victor Sassoon um, loved uh, racing his horses at the horse racing park which is the Renmin Gongyuan and I think they're also the Chinese History Museum and if you go to these places I think it's great to learn about these, uh, the recent history of, of this and yes this is it I hope you liked the short introduction and uh, got to learn a few things and see you again and as always write to me any other big book recommendations into the video or comments. Goodbye.